Welcome to the NeuroSpicy Music channel. Welcome to our first episode in our first podcast series. Um, the entire series is called Embracing the Chaos, Thriving as a uh, Music Educator. And um, it's not really about coping. I, I really want to work on moving towards thriving. Not that I'm always there myself. We're works in progress, but this is sort of what we want to be moving towards, right? We want to be more than just functional human beings, I mean. And so I thought I would create a podcast series where I just kind of touch on some of the subtopics that are a part of my larger presentation. Um, and that way, maybe we'll give us some sound bites. And I think I mentioned in the intro video, I like things to stay around 20 minutes. So that's sort of my goal with this. Just thought I'd show you real quick, um, other than to encourage you to like and subscribe and all the YouTube talk, um, that if you're looking to follow along with the blogs or actually read ahead or whatever you need, you can go to my um, my music consulting page. I'll have the link in the comments and you can find the links to the blogs to follow along underneath the descriptions underneath da -da -da -da, where it says conference sessions. Oh, no, that doesn't say conference sessions conference sessions. There we go. So you could click here on embracing the chaos and it would take you to the page that we are going to be talking about today or a few of them. So I had the opportunity um, this week to present at a conference for the first time. And I've been wondering for a long time if this was the right path for me. Um, I feel I have some things to share and I'm not just sure if it's a vent or a rant or if I actually had content. And so I went and I did the conference and it went really, really well. Um, the feedback I got was really validating and encouraging. And so I thought, okay, the best way probably to um, share this content with a larger audience would be in short, manageable um, little podcasts. And so the first one I'm going to talk about, of course, being me, I'm not going to start at the beginning with all the context and the fun things. We'll get there. Today, I'm going to start with a topic that we didn't get a chance to talk about at the conference yesterday. And it, it really blew my mind because it was like the one tool I was really excited to show everybody. And then there was five minutes left. But if you know me, I like to talk. And I'm also crocheting while, I, while I'm presenting with you here today because... I don't know. It's just what I do. I'm kind of an obsessive crocheter. I don't know what your guys' special interests were. Are. Last year, my hyper-focus was knitting, and I've moved on to crocheting, which is funny because I went from the harder one to the easier one. But anyways, I'm making a scarf. So while I talk and make a scarf, here we go. So the idea of, of uh, different superpowers as uh, being part of neurodiverse, this is something people struggle with, um, and I, I acknowledge that. Um, not everything about being neurodiverse is awesome. Um, we're by no means trying to say that uh, there aren't um, deficits or disabilities associated with our diagnoses, but we're just saying that not everything is bad. We can just do things that other people can't necessarily. And um, as I've, you know, gone through my career, it's often surprised me what comes naturally to me that blows other people's minds. Like when it comes to the creative aspects of putting together performances and coming up with ideas and staging and I always have some like weird, crazy thing up my sleeve, like, you know, conducting Jurassic Park in the inflatable dinosaur costume. Um, and I've always kind of joked about that just being outside the box thinking, and I didn't really tie it directly to a diagnosis. Um, I didn't have a diagnosis when I first started this journey, um, but it is in fact um, something that is, is common in people with neurodiverse conditions. So on my site, if you're gonna just flip through, um, there are a lot of different strengths um, and gifts associated with different types of neurotypicity. Yes, yeah, not even a word. Different types of, you know, the neurotypical umbrella. So uh, autism here, we've got some ideas. You can scroll through in your own, um, or we'll talk about this more in a different podcast because there's some really cool things here. But I wanted to just point out that, in fact, we do have some gifts that maybe other people don't, and this helps us to be a little bit more creative. One of the superpowers that comes with our creativity, um, just regardless of whether you're someone with Tourette's or apraxia or ADHD or autism, tends to be our ability to improvise. And I found an article, and it's it's from a financial um, paper, um, somebody's master's thesis or something along those lines. But it's it's an article talking about um, just that that flexibility and improvisation. Like when I think of improv, I think of jazz. That stresses me out. I mean, I enjoy it, but I'm like, okay, a B flat, flat, 7, 27 D. I don't even know, right? Like thinking through chords and things. I'm like, oh my gosh. No, that's not what we're talking about here. When we're talking about improvisation. We're talking about flexibility of thinking and planning. 
And if you want to go in and read the article, I always have links to my research throughout. Um, but basically what this means is that we may have a lot of energy and thoughts that aren't to our benefit because we're so busy thinking about other ways we could solve the problem. We might not take the most efficient route to get there. Some of us are able to find that like quickly. Oh, this is a new and creative way. Some of us take the long route and that's okay. Um, but this whole idea of being flexible um, as a survival skill, I think is something many of us can relate to. And I find that at all, I'm able, although I'm able to come up with a lot of creative ideas, um, I'm a go big or go home kind of person. So if I don't have somebody with common sense to rein me in, sometimes I get in over my head. I'm very good about going, this is where I want to be. I'm not necessarily going to look at the steps it takes me to get there. I'm just going to leave. I, I joke that I go confidently off in the direction I'm going, whether it's correct or not. So follow me at your own risk. I tend to present with a lot of confidence. I tend to talk like I know what I'm doing and act such. And yeah, I do, but sometimes I'm not. I'm improvising, right? There's a lot of that, that flexible thinking. And, and I need that. I need that space to be creative because... I don't know. The only thing consistent about me is my lack of consistency. And that for me has turned out to be a gift as well as a deficit at times. Um, but getting started on a task, regardless of how big or small, can sometimes be daunting. And so I've looked for tools to kind of remove that barrier. And one of the ones that I found that I think is probably the most powerful that I've seen in a long time, and it isn't just for us who are neurodiverse, right? Those people who are neurotypical will use this too. Um, I think we could uh, share it with our students and friends and find that it has a lot of practical applications. I've shared it with a lot of different educators since I've discovered it and everybody loves it. So I'm going to share it with you now. So it's called Goblin Tools. And this is the little guy you're looking for. He's kind of cute, isn't he? Um, there's a web-based version and there's also the app. There's a paid version of the app and I haven't quite noticed what the difference is yet. I'm the, the free version seems to work really well for me. I'm going to go over what it does and then we'll do some examples. So the number one thing it did when it first launched um, was that it had this magic to do breakdown list. So what do you do when you don't know how to do something? So um, let's think of something that we need to do. Um, it doesn't have to be music related. Maybe we are going to um, make a peanut butter sandwich which I'm not going to do because I'm allergic to peanuts, but this is what my brain came up with. So this is what we're typing in. You type it in. Notice also there's the accessibility feature. I appreciate that. Um, the how much do we need a lot of breaking down? Do we need a little breaking down? I'm going to leave it at the two pepper mark today. You hit the add, so then it adds it to your list. You can you can delete these from your list later with the, the bulk tools. The magic wand here is what I call this, and you click on it, it breaks it down. It's the breakdown button. So now AI is like synthesizing and thinking, okay, it's going to tell me what I need to do. Now, the fun thing is, what if I don't know how to do one of these skills? It can break it down even further for me. So, um, well, let's look at the, yeah, we'll gather the necessary ingredients. So it will, it will break it down. It, it does have some limitations. It is a little simplistic, but just getting started, this is a good way to start. And a lot of their other tools work with this, which is what makes it more powerful. And it works with them, the estimator. How long do I think it's going to make take to make me a peanut butter sandwich? I don't know. Let's find out. Is it going to tell me? I think maybe, oh, there we are. I was going to say 34 minutes and 10 seconds. Okay, maybe this isn't accurate silly thing. Okay. Well, the way I make things, oh, I think, I don't know why. Maybe I have to go to the store or something in there. Okay. So, you know, not everything's perfect. That's, that's fun. But I use this one mostly for, um, if I wanted to do, um, a presentation and I needed to get an outline formed, um, I've used it for that. I've used it for students, um, who don't know how to put a read on a clarinet. I've had them type it into the goblin and it's, it's helped them with that. Um, I've used it to create checklists, um, for my own son, for the back door. Just, you know, I need to get started on something. I need to tell you, what if you have to teach a skill that you've never taught before? This could be useful that way. Like, what if I had to teach somebody how to make a campfire? What do I need? Right? So I could do that. It'll, it'll tell it. It'll break it down for me. I'm not going to use the estimator because who even knows? But it will give me some ideas. Okay. 
Um, another great tool on here is the formalizer. Um, this is one of my favorites. This is the thing that everybody needs in their life. Have you ever had a moment in teaching or in life where you need to communicate in writing to somebody and your thoughts are a little bit on the spicy side? You're angry. You need to write a complaint. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so what am I upset about? And, and, and so have you ever done that where you like write the angry email and then delete? This is that, but better. So I could write my, my annoyed message. Um, I'm like, today I had a student or today your, your child, um, said something racist in class. It was a pain in the neck. Notice that I'm not being sweary because this is a podcast. Yay for me. Um, Okay, I want to make that more professional, less snarky, uh, more informal. No, I'm going to stick with more professional. How spicy? Well, three seems okay. I convert. Today, your child exhibited disrespectful behavior and made inappropriate remarks related to race during their class time. Additionally, their behavior throughout the day was disruptive and uncooperative. That's exactly what I said. They were racist in the pain in the neck. Um, but it's said in a much kinder, gentler tone. Um... I wonder what it would be like if it was uh, uh, less snarky. Mm. Today, your child made a comment in class that could be seen as inappropriate or insensitive. They were also a bit disruptive. Oh, I'm being really nice. Uh, more passionate. This is fun, sorry. I get amused by the smallest things. It's got to think about that one because that was a pretty passionate statement. No, it wasn't. They don't know me. Ah! Oh, wow. This is like more dramatic. This is fun. Today, to my utter dismay and heart-wrenching despair, I witnessed my beloved child, the very essence of my existence. Oh, my God. You can't make this shit up. This is great. Oop, there goes the sweariness. All right. The poignant revelation struck me like a hammer to my chest. Wow. Okay. This is my new favorite thing. I'm just going to go through and make everything more passionate. This is hilarious. The tap fragile tapestry of my hopes and dreams. Staining it with an indelible mark of shame. Oh, the excruciating. Oh, my goodness. I'll spend all 24 minutes in. Wow. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, you see, there's, there's some things we can do with this. <sighs> the judge. The parent responds to your email. <laughs> can you imagine if you sent that other one? That's hilarious. So, the parent responds, um, and I don't know about you, but catastrophizing or immediately going to the worst case. It's kind of my mindset. I'm working on it. I constantly say that. I'm working on it. I'm always working on everything. But I am. It's, um, am I misreading your tone? It's an autism diagnosis. Yeah, probably am. Um, so I tie copy paste it in or I can speak it in. Again, I like the accessibility feature. I ask it to judge and it it tells me, you know, should I be offended? Right? So that's super helpful. The estimator, which we've discovered is not super good, but maybe if we adjust the spice. How hard is it for you to focus on the activity? Oh, that's a good question. Hmm. Maybe if it's not hard, let's try that. So I'm going to make a sandwich. Huh. You can't possibly take me 30 minutes to make a sandwich. It would take my 11-year-old 30 minutes to make a sandwich. Five to 10 minutes. Okay, yeah. So, but my 11-year-old, my because like his neurospiciness makes mine look like it doesn't move. Five to 15. Okay, so this this is a little bit more accurate. I don't know why it was being weird over there. Do it in here. Okay, the compiler, this is for brain dumps. If you're like, I have to do this and 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 this, and then you hit it, turn it into tasks. That's nice. The com um, and then the chef. Another thing that everybody can use, type down any ingredients you happen to have in the kitchen. So uh, what do I got tonight? Well, I already know what I'm making, but I have pork chops and I have mushroom soup. I'm not putting in any punctuation. Let's see what happens. I have pasta. I have garlic. What's going to make? This is your dance break. It's slow today. It's thinking. There's lots of options, apparently. Ah, it's going to make creamy mushroom pork chops for me. So there we go. And then I can take it and I can add it just immediately to, oh, let's get this out of the way, the send result to the magic to do. Right, so they're building more integration between the tools that they have um, within the site. It's a work in progress, right? Okay, here we go. Here's my recipe in point form, which I actually prefer. And if I had any questions, I, I could ask it to, to break things down for me further. 
I'm not going to ask it to estimate time. Um, but okay, goblins. This is a, uh, I'm a tool that I can have open in a, um, a tab on my computer that I can refer to throughout the day. It's something I can send students to. It's an app I have on my phone. Um, I'm really enjoying goblin tools. Um, I give it five stars for um, meeting needs and getting things done. I give it three stars for the estimator because that was not right. Um, I give it seven million stars for the making it more passionate thing because that, that made my life far, far funnier today. So kudos to Goblin Tools. Um, it works through AI, which we are all familiar with from the many, many movies that have warned us about AI and well, people just don't learn. We don't learn from history. Why would we learn from movies? Um, so AI for teachers. Um, I know there's a lot of conversation about the appropriateness. I use it to get myself started. I think that the ethics behind it can be sketchy when you're using it to create all the content. But if you're using it as a guideline, I, th I think it can be very powerful. If you're using it for feedback, it can be very powerful. Um, the rephrasing, like those sorts of things, right? That That's what I use it for, what I think is appropriate within the, the context of education. I use it for writing reference letters um, for students because it's really nice to be able to just put in the name, the scholarship, the three things I want to say that are positive and go. Um, and it creates it for me with the names embedded, all of that. Of course, you must vet, right? Um, AI is not replacing us. AI is helping us. So by giving us an outline, we can go through, we can adjust tone. You can ask it to rewrite it with more words, less words, but it's all about the prompts you use. Um, I'm really good with prompts myself. Um, I've been interneting since it existed, right? That's one of the things I like to tell my middle schoolers. I graduated from high school the year the internet went public and it was kind of invented, 1994. I started on Gopher, DOS prompts, HTML coding. Those of you with PowerSchool are struggling with that. Yeah, yeah, us oldies, we, we've been HTMLing for a while because I wanted to make a wedding website. Um, again, hyper-focused, hyper-interests lead us down interesting rabbit holes. I'm quite tech savvy and it's not because I'm tech savvy, it's because I want to do things that require tech. So I found um, a free AI cheat sheet here. If you click on this one, it's done by uh, Khan Academy. So if you can just Google them, um, you can sign up. It's of course an email. Um, I have an email address that I use just for subscriptions, by the way, and then never go back to unless I forget passwords. Um, so anyways, thoughts. Um, but anyways, I subscribe to things all the time so I can get the freebies. And and this was actually a really good one. Um, there's some really cool prompts for using it to work with between platforms. Um, and they're launching this thing here that you can see advertised called Comingo. It's, it's going to be a virtual assistant for teachers. It's only available in the States right now. Um, but when it becomes available in Canada, you can believe I'm going to try it. So I think prompts are good. Um, I think explore that. I think AI can be very powerful, but I think it, it, it shouldn't replace your um, creative process. That's why we use it to corral or to put something in that you've already created and take some feedback. Um, how many of you love notebooks? I, I'm a huge notebook person. Um, I'm guilty of starting many, many notebooks on the same topic and then being annoyed because they're not in the same place. So rocket book has been integral, has become an integral tool for me. Um, it's a reusable notebook, which is what they advertise. Uh, the texture of the paper is a little, um, vellum. Um, the writing, if um, you don't like scratchy pens, you should like this. I don't find that it's like that. I find there's a tiny little bit more drag to them writing on regular paper. Um, it's a little bit of a heavier process. But if you like writing with liquid ink pens, this it, it's got that feel. So um, you write with these inexpensive, they're like $4 pens. I think they're flex pens or something. Um, they come, you get one with the book. I immediately lost mine and had to buy six more. They're all over my house. Um, but they're super um, inexpensive and easy to use and erasable just with water, right? You just, when you're done, you take a picture of it and it with the app and it sends it to the site of your, your choice. And I don't have an icon on here that, that shows you directly, but at the bottom of the page here, there's like a little apple and a little arrow and another little symbol. And on the app, you set up those as destinations. So mine, the apple is my Google um, Drive. The uh, arrow is my home email. The X thingy is my work email. And then I have one set up for my son's um, drive because my son's a doodler. Um, and then this gets rid of that um, whole, how many pieces of paper do you have all over your classroom too? Like you could just set, it can set it for a link to your Google classroom as well, actually, which is cool, right? So you could just have a dump site on the Google classroom. Maybe you would call it, you know, 
kids doodles. Um, and, and so if you have a student who's been doodling during your class in there in, in a rocket book, which you've provided them probably, right? Um, yeah, you just scan it in, send it there. They have it for later. There's none of this, no, throw out my picture thing, right? Um, it's there. It, it's in chronological order. You can sort it. And, and it's, it's quite powerful that way. Um, I, I really, really like it. It's, it's inexpensive too. I mean, the, I think the notebooks start around 25 Canadian. You can get them on Amazon. I, I'm going to sign up to become an affiliate so that I can like make a little cash off this. So in the future, these will be affiliate links, but I've been too busy actually presenting and doing things. They've come out with beacons, which kind of do the same thing, but on regular paper or on a whiteboard. Um, how I see this being useful is when I scroll something up on the board real fast, that becomes a warm up, click, and then it goes to Google Classroom and the kids can have it for practice. So the Rocket Notebook is a really, really, um, I think, really cool tool. Um, I think it really uh, bridges a lot of different sort of needs. Um, it has a planner. They have planners. They have little notebooks. They have everything, right? Um, so you can work with the different templates. I would really encourage you to explore it. It's available in iOS and Android. Um, and, and it's an inexpensive solution for um, getting started, keeping track of notes and, and working with creativity that way. Um, so those are just a couple of tools that I was going to highlight in this first little podcast. We can talk a whole lot more about other tools as we go forward, but I just want to keep things short and simple. And that is something I really wish I had a few minutes to talk about yesterday at my conference. So I hope that you found something of use here um, and that you can apply it to your life. These are tools I think you can use right away. And being free, I, I like that that barrier is removed. Um, I encourage you to share ideas that you have with me in the comments. I'm, I'm happy to, to add to my repertoire at all times. Part of this journey for me is to build on what I already know and, and, and learn new things because like I've said in my there's like a little funny red warning at the beginning of this whole blog. Dude, I'm not an expert. I do my research. I share from my lived experience and um, I validate other people's because it's different than mine and that's okay. Um, also because neurodiversity is such a broad spectrum of, of conditions, right? Like what works for, for myself with my labels might not quite work the same way for someone else. Also because of the way that we all present in different ways with different severities, however you wish to determine that, right? Like please, please understand a million times over that these are imposed upon us by neurotypicals for the most part who create the standards, right? So the idea that high, mid, low functioning, this is my last rant of the, of the podcast, I promise. So my daughter's autistic uh, as well. Um, she's diagnosed low functioning. What does that mean? It means that she was nonverbal. So in order to do things the way neurotypicals did, she did not function well, right? Um, even though speech is a very small percentage of communication, right? They, 74 to 90%, depending on the studies you read, of communication is nonverbal. Most of it is the micro expressions, the timing, the energy. There's a lot of things involved in communication, right? Um, so even though she could do the 74 to 90% stuff, well, in her own ways even too, though, right? Like maybe not interpretive the same way by neurotypical brains. Um, low functioning. I'm verbal. I'm, I'm incredibly verbal. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. I just talk. Um, I have good eye contact. I have, I have other skills that come to me a little bit more naturally um, than other people with autism. So I'm considered high functioning. Basically, that means I can trick neurotypical people into thinking I'm okay more times than I can't. But it still leaves me with a constant sense of this is not enough. This is not right. Oh my God, I am screwing this up still. Um, and I'm hoping that through doing this podcast, maybe I find a way to lessen that a little bit. The self-talk thing is something I'm also on a journey with. And, you know, I, I like validation, don't we all? And, and presenting yesterday was... Um, was very much that for me, not just so like, like ego validation. Cause I mean, yeah, but no more like, okay, yeah, I have something of value to say and, and watching other people's eyes light up in the room and the nodding in the comments after. Okay. Yeah. Um, what I have to say has value, um, to you and you will, you will find it helpful. And so on my journey to be who I wish I'd had this, this is the goal. So thank you very much for your time. If you liked what I had to say, please like um, and subscribe. More content will be coming on a irregular basis. <laughs> I wish I could say every Friday, every Saturday. Yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, no, the only consistent thing about me is my inconsistency. Let's celebrate that because um, 
yeah, it's just a part of who I am. And um, I'm almost 50 and it's on the list of things I've decided that, yeah, yeah, screw it. I'm not changing it now. Um, I'm just going to roll with it because zero to a hundred has always worked for me. And I think the fact that I've never died. Yeah, that doesn't reinforce the maybe I shouldn't do it again thing. It is what it is. But if you like my rants, my vibe, what's going on here, please like and subscribe, please share and uh, please comment and uh, follow me on the other socials. I'm, I'm happy to ha have you here. I'm happy to help you and share any resources I have and um, reach out with your questions. Be kind to yourselves. Um, I'm going to try and do the same. Um, be kind to each other and um, let's share what we know because that I think really is the answer to, to um, well, feeling like maybe we fit in a little bit better in this crazy, crazy world. So enjoy your neuro spicy day and I will, I will see you next time here on our podcast.